Hello and welcome to this week's video and this week I have been testing extensively the Octave V110 SE Valve Integrated Amplifier. To find out how I got on, please stay tuned, all is about to be revealed. <laughs> Hello and welcome to this week's Elite Audio video and I have a very small favour to ask of you. If you have enjoyed our channel content or indeed enjoyed any of our previous videos, it would mean such a great deal to us here at Elite Audio if you would take a few seconds to like and subscribe to our channel. Thanks in advance and enjoy this week's episode. You can probably gather we have a little bit of a valve theme running at the moment in our videos and <clears throat> for very good reason. In our uh, showroom event on the 18th of May, and you may have seen that in some of our previous videos. <laughs> We will in fact be showcasing the Octave valve amplifiers along with English acoustics and equally the valve DAC from Aqua in the form of the La Scala Optologic Mark II. And we will be showing you, along with our streamer shootout on the day, uh, which is the main theme of the event, what valve rolling means in terms of changing the tonality of your amplifier. Anyway, that all aside, one of the amplifiers that we will be featuring on that day is the amplifier that I have been listening to over the last week or so. And as I said at the start, it is the Octave V110 SE. Now, for those of you who may have heard of Octave, and for those of you who haven't, I always think it's really important to give a bit of background to a company. Where did they start? How long have they been in business? Well, you may or may not know this, but Octave used to be a transformer winding company. And in fact, the company was established in the 1950s. Now, those of you that understand how to make a great valve amplifier or understand about some of the key elements that go into making a valve amplifier sound great, but also give it the ability to deliver Lots of current when the transients demand that current, thus giving your amplifier a decent amount of dynamic headroom. It comes down to the transformers. And this is an area where Octave, in my opinion, have some of the best expertise and in-depth knowledge than probably any other manufacturer because their background is entirely based on transformer winding. So it is no surprise for those of you who already own Octave amplifiers to appreciate why your amplifier sounds so good. Anyway, the amplifier that I have been listening to is the V110 AC, and it puts out a remarkable 110 watts of valve power using KT88 valves. You can also specify it with KT120s or KT1. 50 valves, but the one we've been testing is the KT88 carbon valves. Now, one of the reasons why Octave can give you a valve amplifier without any solid state assistance, or indeed even making it a hybrid design, is they use something called ODT, which, is, which they call Octave Dynamic Technology. Now, this technology was first seen in their flagship Jubilee series amplifiers. And again, these have won some incredible accolades. And this uh, technology has been filtered down into the 110 SE. And it means that you can extract 
incredible amounts of power from KT88 valves or indeed any of the valves that you use. Now, it genuinely does take you by surprise when you listen to this amplifier, what it is capable of doing in terms of its power output. And if you look around, finding a valve amp that will give you 110 watts is quite unusual. Let's just put it that way. Um, before I really get into how it sounds, there is a story I need to share about Octave. And you may have heard the story. I have mentioned it, I think, in a previous video, but it is one of the most remarkable and eye-opening and mouth wide open stories I think that I have ever experienced in my 20 odd years in the audio industry. Some years ago when what Hi-Fi were still based at Teddington Lock, we arranged to have an Octave V80 SE, which is the flagship amplifier reviewed by what Hi-Fi. And I met up with Thomas Brieger who is the international sales manager for Octave at Teddington Lock. And he proceeded to unbox the VATSE for the reviewer. We got it set up in a listening room that they had prepared. So he did the whole thing, connected the source, connected the amp to the speakers and so on. Now, one of the great features about Octave amplifiers is that when you turn the amplifier on, it goes through a very precise slow start so it's a very gradual increase of current across the valves now just to diversify for a second one of the i would say achilles heels for amplifiers valve based and why some people are very reluctant to even consider these in their system is the potential that the valves will need replaced at some point now that is the inevitability of wanting a valve amplifier that's like a light bulb at some point it will need replaced but one of the keys to maximizing the longevity of valves is this slow start function. Because by gradually increasing the voltage and current across the valves, it means you don't stress the valves at all. So that's just a, an additional piece of information before I actually get to the crux of the story. So anyway, Thomas gets everything set up, hits play on the source, turns up the volume, and everything sounds great. Without announcing anything or letting anybody know what he was about to do next. He gets out his seat, he walks across to one of the loudspeakers, he detaches the cable at that end, and of course the sound drops on the left channel. Thomas very gleefully with a glint in his eye, takes the two connectors and touches them together. Now, <gasps> you don't have to be an expert in hi-fi to know that doing that to any amplifier would normally be catastrophic in the extreme, normally resulting in the smoke alarms going off and probably a visit from your local fire service. But this is the thing, so genuinely myself, the reviewer, we're just sat there wide open. I, I, I wouldn't recommend anybody trying this, by the way, even if you are an Octave owner. However, Thomas casually then goes over to the amp, which had gone into protection mode, turns the amplifier off, goes back to the loudspeaker, reconnects the cable, goes back to the amplifier, powers it back on, the amplifier goes through its normal warm-up process, uh, hits play on the source again, turns the volume up, and everything plays as normal. Now, I don't know of a solid-state amp that can do that, never mind a valve amplifier. Normally, if you do something like that to a valve amp or any amplifier, you're talking catastrophic internal failure to the point it will require a significant amount of repair work and restoration. So this is a remarkable safety feature that Octave have built into their amplifiers, making them, in my opinion, some of the safest and easiest to use and robust of any amplifier type that is actually out there. And this really sort of brings me back to this initial comment that I made about valves not being for everyone, because Generally, the feedback and I guess the hurdle to valve ownership for a lot of people is exactly this, that it's not uncommon that if a valve goes on a valve amplifier, it will take out perhaps you know, a significant amount of other uh, electronics and circuit boards, etc. And I have known valve amps that have required significant rebuild because of that very thing, but not with an octave. And in fact, in my opinion, as I said, they are some of the most robust 
reliable and easy to use valve amplifiers, meaning there is indeed no obstacle to owning a valve amplifier. And that leads me on to probably the most important aspect of what a valve amplifier does. And I would kind of liken this to a, if you take a guitarist, for example, and most guitarists wouldn't perform without using a valve amplifier. Solid state has its place, but there is no real substitute for the tone and texture that a valve amplifier can bring. And when implemented correctly, the same applies to a valve amplifier in hi-fi terms. There is just something about the tonal quality, the organic presentation that makes a valve amplifier exceptionally special. An octave, in terms of what they produce and at the price they produce them at, do something remarkable in my opinion. The other very interesting aspect of the octave valve amplifiers is that you can add, in addition to uh, the power that they give you, something called a black box or a super black box. And without trying to oversimplify what these devices do, they in essence increase the dynamic headroom of the amplifier. And I know Thomas has told me stories of very low powered octave amplifiers driving BMW Nautilus loudspeakers, which everybody knows are incredibly difficult to drive with very amplifier shattering low impedance uh, outputs at certain frequencies that, and I know of people that have lost amplifiers never to be recovered from the experience of connecting them to an awkward impedance load loudspeaker. So what you have here is the ability to have your octave amplifier drive any loudspeaker regardless of efficiency or perhaps amplifier damaging low impedance uh, aspects of the frequency response. Um, there is another very unique element to the V110SE. In fact, it's the first amplifier in the octave range that offers the ability to change the damping factor. And in fact, this means you can match it to any loudspeaker. Now, it comes from the factory. Uh, there's three levels. There's low, medium, and high. It comes with the medium setting. It comes with the ability to change that very easily. And all you do is simply change the, one of the input tubes. So it comes with two, so you can select uh, the ability, or you have the ability to change the damping factor. And that means that if, for example, you've got a very high efficient loudspeaker, what you don't want is something that's got a high damping factor because that can then give you a harsh or brittle sound. So Octaf are very cleverly giving you the ability to perfectly match their amplifiers with the loudspeaker you have. And again, we can take you through that process. But, and this is the best part of all, what does it sound like? In a word, it's a fantastic amplifier. And I can see no barrier to ownership regardless of your existing setup. You can really find yourself fully immersed in what is going on in terms of your music. And I'll give a good example. Uh, this is a very, uh, in fact, I want to bring it up on screen so you can see the track I'm talking about. And those of you that used to watch the Barry Norman uh, film nights uh, will recognize this song immediately. It's by Bill Taylor. And this particular version of it, which I'm pretty sure was the one that was used it just, it's a brilliant track, so piano, primarily a piano track. The thing that I love about valves and the octave amplifiers in particular is their ability to give you that true sense of the instrument. And what I mean by that is that, for example, the attack of the piano, the initial uh, attack of the uh, piano striking the uh, internals of the string itself, where you can hear that initial attack and then the decay and just how that sounds. And literally, if you shut your eyes, and I, I can tell you, I've spent hours listening to this late at night, finding it very hard to drag myself off to bed, playing track after track. It becomes hugely and a hugely engaging process. 
And there is just this level of organic presentation that makes this amplifier very special. And it's a theme that runs through the whole octave range from the V40 SE, which is an entry level valve integrated. You then have the V70 SE, the V110 SE, and the V80 SE. There's also a pure class A valve amplifier, the V70 class A. There's also the V16, which is a very low powered single ended, I think it's about eight watts per channel, that is primarily a headphone stroke integrated amplifier. And then we get into the pre-power ranges right up to the Jubilee uh, uh, models in that range as well. And octave amplifier go well into significant sums of money, you know, for a very high priced motor car. This is the range that octave work in. But the reviews are all very consistent. You know, they tell you that this is something very special. The build quality on these amplifiers is staggeringly good. They have an enviable reliability record. They're all handmade in Germany and it really does show through. They're very easy to use. Uh, biasing the valves is very simple. There's a traffic light system. You put the amplifier into bias mode and you should get four green lights across the display, meaning that the valves are biased correctly. You simply, there's a screwdriver supply, there's a small hole at the front uh, under each light, and you simply rotate the screw head uh, clockwise or anti-clockwise to change the voltage across the valve and thus bias, but four green lights is what you should have. You can interestingly change the tone of the amplifier slightly by uh, putting the green lights into amber, which will give you a slightly warmer sound. You can also tweak them slightly into the red, where it just flicks on to the red itself. Again, giving a slightly brighter, perhaps more dynamic sound. So you can also fine tune subtly, I would say a, a very uh, noticeable tonal change if that's what you wish to do. When we turn and look at the back of the V110 SE, we can see that Octave have indeed considered every conceivable aspect of connectivity. So there are a standard for line level inputs. One of these can be configured as a moving magnet or moving coil phono stage, leaving three others for other source components. We also have one balanced or XLR input. There is a very handy tape out for perhaps using a headphone amplifier. They've even thought about the AV bypass with a front channel input from your AV amplifier itself, bypassing the pre-stage inside the V110AC, whereby your AV amplifier would then function as the preamp and the V110AC working purely as a power amplifier for your front channel speakers. There is also a pre-out, uh, which again can be used for a secondary power amplifier. There is the power selector switch, which can switch between 70 watts low or a high of 110 watts. Interestingly, when you choose the lower power selector, it will give you a slightly warmer sound than the high power option at 110 watts. And I've experimented with that over the last week or so, listening to the differences. It is subtle, but the differences there nonetheless. Then we come to the loudspeaker outputs, and these are high grade speaker connections for bananas or spades. And then we can see further to the right, there is the black box connector. This is where you would connect the black box or super black box that I discussed earlier in the video. And finally, we have the IEC socket for the power in. But that then leads me on to the purpose or one of the elements of our showroom event on the 18th of May and that is valve rolling and what we intend to demonstrate is that valve amplifiers give you this unique opportunity to influence the tonal presentation and the dynamics of the sound precisely to your taste and valve rolling trust me when you start start getting into it can be hugely hugely addictive and a lot of fun and it can become an obsession. All of those things can happen very easily when you fall down or drop into the rabbit hole of valve rolling. But anyway, we will demonstrate that to you firsthand on the 18th of May. And in fact, while I remember, if you wish to book tickets for the 18th of May, in the video description below will be a link that will allow you to do, to do just that. 
and you can book as many as you wish, but it is a ticket only event and we are getting very close to our capacity for the event. So get your tickets booked. We've got Wildfire Pizza coming along on the day. We've got representatives from REL, from English Acoustics, from Inus and from Paradigm all here on hand who will be able to ask all your questions throughout the day. It's going to be a great day. So fingers crossed we get the weather. I am less confident of that than perhaps in previous years when we've had so many rainy days this year. It's been quite incredible. But I'm sure the sun will be shining regardless and the fun of the shootout test of the streamers that we have will be really fascinating and I'm genuinely looking forward to seeing how that all progresses. So there we go. This is a great amplifier. I, in fact, all the Octal valve amplifiers are worthy of consideration. It's so hugely musical. It will drive any loudspeaker. There's so many levels of flexibility that these amplifiers offer that aren't available from a standard solid state amplifier or indeed from other valve amplifiers. The ability that you have to match perfectly with your existing system makes Octav very high on the list of compliance in terms of if you want a valve amplifier, then you should look at an Octav if that's the route you wish to go. And they'll work with anything, you know, hybrid speakers, electrostatics, very difficult to drive loud speakers, very high efficiency speakers. It's, there's such a diversity that you can match these two. So if you have that little itch that you want to scratch about valves and haven't done so, or indeed if you're an existing valve owner, I can tell you now, there is those nodding their heads right now, sagely wise that own Octave, that understand exactly what I'm talking about, who have owned Octave amplifiers for years and would not look at anything else. So if it's something you wish to discuss, Here's my direct email, drop me a line. I would love to hear about your system. In fact, if there's anything I can help you with in your existing system, don't hesitate to get in touch. And please keep the comments coming on our videos. We really appreciate the time and effort that you guys put into commenting. And of course, as always, um, music is such a great thing and I always say this, and it's such a privilege to work in an uh, industry where music pleasure and delivering that to you, the audiophile, the, the music enthusiast and hi-fi enthusiast, it genuinely does feel like a privilege to be part of your journey to giving you the best sound. And we never take that for granted. And every opportunity we have to be a part of that is something we thoroughly enjoy and are really passionate about here at Elite Audio. So there we go. Um, a great amplifier. You'll be able to hear that at our showroom event on the 18th of May, along with the other valve amplifiers that we will have here. We'll have two very distinct setups, but the main part of the day is the streamer shootout to blind shootout. So you'll have no idea what you're listening to, but you will get to vote and it will be a knockout type competition and we will then arrive at the best of the best. And if you watched our previous video about the Ineos statement, you will know that that is one of the devices we'll have here. In fact, as a follow up to that video, I can tell you, I thought it was great out of the box and with some running. Wow, after a few days of burning, it is a remarkable, remarkable, streaming device, something that tells me that in yours and their latest incarnation of all of their streamers across the range have really come to maturity. And I'll tell you now, other manufacturers should be very worried indeed. And in fact, I'm sure they are right now trying to reverse engineer what in yours have done. So come along, hear it for yourself, be part of our great day and Thank you so much for watching this week. I genuinely appreciate the fact that you take the time. I can see how many of you watch our videos and thank you from me and the team here at Elite Audio. So until next week, please take care and have a great week listening to music.